Do any of these acronyms mean something to you? Rocky, 32 gig FC, NVMe, TCP IP. They should be because I.O. matters. Hi, this is Todd Owens. I'm the field technical marketing manager at Marvell on the HPE team. Marvell is a semiconductor company who's a strategic partner with HPE, and we provide a whole lot of technology that's used in HPE server, storage, and networking products and solutions. And today I want to talk about I.O., the I.O. basics. There are three things that you hear when you're talking to somebody about I.O. connectivity. You hear bandwidth, you hear IOPS, and you hear latency. Uh, those are the three parameters that you typically hear, see on data sheets, reading quick specs, and those kind of things. And I want to talk to you about what the difference between those things are. So let's start out with the term bandwidth. What do we mean by bandwidth? Well, my uncle was a plumber, and uh, plumbers deal a lot with pipes. And so we're going to use the plumbing analogy to explain bandwidth. Bandwidth is all about the size of the pipe. If I have a 10, 10 gigabit network versus a 25 gigabit network, what's the difference between the 10 and 25? It's the size of the pipe. It's how much information that we can move inside the pipe itself. And it's really the size of that pipe. 16 gig fiber channel, 32 gig fiber channel. I can fit twice as much stuff in the pipe with 32 gig than I can with 16 gig. So. Why is bandwidth important? Well, there are some applications that are very critical, that bandwidth becomes very critical for. The first one that's most popular is, that people understand is backup and recovery. Now, why is bandwidth important to backup and restore operations? The reason is because they use very large block sizes. By using large block sizes, we have lots of data that's going down the pipe. And the larger the block size, the more it fills up the pipe. So the more backup you have, the bigger the pipe you want. So to reduce your backup window, use larger, um, larger bandwidth technology, 32 gig fiber channel, 25 gig ethernet. Uh, the other applications that are, are very sensitive to bandwidth would be video, video processing. So movies, digitization, anybody who's doing film editing, again, you're dealing with very large block sizes, and the larger the block size, the bigger the pipe you need. And last but not least, most common in the enterprise, are databases. Databases typically run in the 128K or greater block size. Some of them run at 4 and 8K block size and, and are not going to be quite as sensitive to bandwidth, but you know, Oracle, SQL, you can tune those databases to run at very high block sizes, and therefore you need very large bandwidth. The other parameter we want to talk about is IOPS. Okay? IOPS is input-output processes per second. And this has to do with how much I can actually, um, how many of these transactions can I actually fill in the pipe. Now the thing about IOPS is all of us manufacturers, we like to tout how many IOPS that we can push. So for example, in our 25 gig ethernet adapters, I can do you know, two point something million IOPS. In my 32 gig fiber channel adapters now, I can do two million IOPS. That's great, but let's do the math. If we look at the, um, at the IOPS curve, okay? Let's just measure the number of IOPS we can do based on the block size of the transaction. And if we do the math, you find that the curve looks something like this. So what we end up with is um, up here, roughly 7 million IOPS at the high end for 512 byte blocks, okay? Now, we move out here to 4K block size, or 8K block size, or 32K block size. The larger the block size, the lower the IOPS. We're running, in, in this world, we're running somewhere around 400K here, around 200K here. And this becomes line rate, okay? Line rate being the bandwidth that you can run at. 
So if I look at, um, for example, a uh, 32 gig fiber channel, it may start here at maybe a, a couple million IOPS and then hit line rate. Then I run 16 gig fiber channel. It's not gonna start as, as high because it doesn't have as big a bandwidth and the line rate's gonna be a little bit lower. But you can see, once you get in this 4K and 8K block size, in this area, everybody's about the same, right? So once you get to a block size of 8K or above, the IOPS really don't matter anymore. So where do IOPS matter? IOPS matter for applications that run at very small block sizes. And in the storage world, there aren't very many of those. In um, the Ethernet world, there are some, like telco. Uh, in, the, in the telco market, you've got all those SMS messages, all those text messages we send back and forth to each other. They're very small. And so small packet performance becomes very important and IOPS becomes very important in those environments. But from a storage perspective, IOPS, it's kind of an interesting number to know, but where do, where do, your, disk, or where do your disk arrays run at? 200, 300K? That's because they're all running out here at this line rate, right? So I would argue that IOPS is a nice thing to know, but bandwidth is much more important than that. Now, there's a third, and the third is latency. So with latency, this, go back to our pipe analogy again, latency can be explained simply by the time it takes for a transaction to flow from one end to the other, from one device to the other device and back again. The lower the latency, the faster your transactional performance, right? So latency becomes a very critical element to the performance of your I.O. system. Bandwidth, I would argue, would be the second most important, and then third, pay attention to the IOPS that you need. So with those three parameters, you're off to a good start and having a conversation with your customer to understand what their bandwidth, IOPS, and latency requirements really are gonna to be to build the best solution you can build for the customer. Thanks for watching, this is Todd Owen. My contact details are below here. Feel free to reach out to me at any time with any questions that you might have relating to IO technology.